maybe we could try this. Maybe I could try to give a case from a psychological perspective for the leftist claims and we could take them apart that way. And I think it is, see, it's a hard conversation to delve into because I don't exactly think this is properly characterized as a leftist claim. It's partly that, but it's also a partly a claim of devious, manipulative, psychopathic narcissists. And that's not exactly the same as a political or an intellectual claim. You know, just like on the religious front, the religious claims of, of great monotheistic systems are often hijacked by bad actors and manipulators. That, that's the Pharisees in the gospel accounts. You see the same thing on the political side. But let's delve into this a little bit because there's, there's plenty to be said about the idea of, well, we could start with implicit bias. So that's something that the scientific community centered at Harvard around Mazarin Banerjee and her work on the implicit association test, that idea of implicit bias is something that the scientific community, the scientific community has offered to the radicals to buttress their claims. So maybe we could delve into that a little bit because people need to understand this. Does that, is that reasonable as far as you're concerned? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. So your perceptions, all of our perceptions are biased and they're biased towards our goals. So when you look at the world, basically what you see is a pathway forward to a goal that you're pursuing. And then you see the things in the world that will either help you along that pathway or, or get in your way. Everything else is turned into irrelevance. And obviously, when we look at the world, we don't see most of it, right? We see what, what's right in front of us, for example. But even more specifically, we see a pathway to a goal and things that move us towards that and things that get in the way. And that could be friends and foes, for example. So your, your goals do determine your perceptions in large, in large, uh, in large, in a large, in a large manner. Now there's exceptions to that. Like if something unexpected happens, because if something unexpected happens and it stops you from moving forward, that will attract your attention and you'll turn to investigate it. But that's basically the perceptual landscape. And one of the implications of that is that we do live inside something that, if it's described, seems like a story rather than a set of facts. Okay, so this has been more or less understood for something approximating 100 years because the psychoanalytic types like Freud and then Jung kind of cottoned on to this first, that we live, we have a perceptual structure that filters the world when we interact with it. Now, the social psychologists got a hold of that, and they built a test that purported to measure implicit bias, and they showed, they said they showed that the, the research is unclear, and at best, it's speculative and, um, and theoretical. They purported to show that we had perceptual biases that favored our in-groups. And that's not really that surprising as far as I'm concerned, because, you know, you obviously uh, have a inbuilt preference to care for yourself, and then you have an inbuilt preference to care for your mother and your father and your siblings, and you have a kin preference, and then you probably have something like a tribal preference, and then you probably have a race preference insofar, at least insofar as other race people are somewhat novel. And so on that edifice was built up the notion of implicit bias. And of course, the DEI types grabbed the implicit bias literature and ran with it. It was a gift and a godsend to the HR types, the Karens in the HR world, who could then point to scientific validation. And now the Mazarin Banaji of Yale, of, of Harvard, um, her colleagues, who helped invent the implicit association test, most of them have backed off with regards to its political implications. But Dr. Banaji, who's really quite a leftist, right down to the core, like most social psychologists, is still beating the implicit bias drum. Okay, sorry for the lengthy explanation, but you can see that the thorniness of the problem, and that's an important thing to attend to, because the claim that we have as human beings, that we have a bias towards those who are closer to us, depending on the dimension of evaluation, 
appears to be true. And I'll just close with two things and then please like push on me. Um, that's implicit or unconscious bias. It's, it's before you perceive. That doesn't mean that can't be overcome by learning. In fact, much of what learning does is modify your implicit biases, right? Because you, you have to see something a particular way when you first perceive it, but you can learn to differentiate your perception and to become more sophisticated. That's what socialization is for, and that's what education was for, is for. But also, there's no reason to presume whatsoever on the implicit bias front that it doesn't characterize all ethnicities and racial groups equally. So, well, so I'm kind of curious about what you think about all that. It's complicated. You know, the idea that we look at the world through a motivated framework, that, that's a real challenge to the Enlightenment view of rationality. And I'm afraid that the Enlightenment rationalists were, they, or the empiricists in particular, who thought that we derived all of our conceptions from sense data, that's not true. It's wrong. Yeah, well, I think, I mean, I, I don't think I would disagree with anything that you said, but with, with maybe per, perhaps the exception of, uh, you know, you said that we've known this for the last hundred years or so. I, I, I would argue that we've probably known most of this for as long as human beings have been self-aware because, uh, I mean, just the basic idea that we all are biased and we're all moving through the world in a, you know, in a way that we, that we, we aren't seeing things like exactly objectively like robots. I think that, of course, of course, that's the case. Um, and we all have our own like priorities and preferences and motivations and goals and everything, and you carry that with you, and and you bring that into every interaction and w w with with everybody and, and and into every situation in your life. Um, now, as far as that extends to even racial bi biases, I mean, uh, I, I think I think history proves that there's that 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 is often the case. Also, the problem is that on the kind of quote unquote anti-racist DEI side of this, um, the issue for them is that, well, there's a couple of things. The big one is that they would probably also agree with a lot of what you just said. And even they would say that it kind of vindicates their point of view. They would listen to that and say, see, this is what we're talking about. Except that for them, that applies to white people only. And if, if you were to say, well, no, this is just the human condition. This everybody is this way. Uh, they would they wouldn't track you that far. They wouldn't they wouldn't go that far. They can't go that far. So that that's really the problem. To, to me, that's the the essential problem with the whole implicit bias conversation right now. And it might have been different fifty years ago, but right now the problem with it is that when we talk about implicit bias, we're only talking about it with one group, and we're not engaging with it as a um, as a fact of human nature, but instead as a fact of like white human nature. Which, which, which these people see as something completely distinct and different from, I guess, the nature of all other people who are not white. And then the second problem with the way that they approach the issue is that they see it as something that they have to fix, um, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. I think is an issue in and of itself because I don't think that it's something they need to fix. Yeah. And then yeah. all of their prescription, all of their prescriptions for fixing it, are completely wrong. So. There might be a, a, a kind of a, a starting point here where there's some truth in the starting point, but then it just falls apart as you continue along.